Hi, thank you for joining us today for part one of our three-part series on ArcGIS Online in Education. Today we'll be focusing on getting started with ArcGIS Online by exploring connections to curriculum, resources that are available, and how to make your first map. My name is Jean Tong and I work at Esri Canada in the Education and Research Department. I manage the group supporting K-12 educators across Canada. I am a former classroom teacher of geography and history in Ontario. Today I'm joined by my colleague Haley Conway who will help facilitate this session and answer your question. GIS ties to curriculum and content and skills. It is a tool that your students can use to work through the inquiry process as they define a question, acquire data, analyze the data, and act on their findings. Our part two session on October 12th will focus on using ArcGIS Online as an inquiry tool. GIS is a cross-curricular tool that has applications in subjects such as history, science, geography, and business. We have a number of resources that support the use of GIS in these subjects, such as our Ancient Civilizations activity, where students explore the ancient civilizations of Mesopotamia, Egypt, and the Indus Valley to discover how these civilizations have influenced our lives today. This activity supports social studies and history curriculum at various grade levels across the country. In the Aboriginal Peoples of North America lesson, students explore Aboriginal and European settlements in North America. This lesson has many connections to social studies curriculum at various grade levels across the country. In our last example, our Canadian Natural Regions lesson, students explore ecozones, landforms, climate, the growing season, and wildlife biodiversity, and identify patterns in these natural regions across Canada and in their own province or territory. Again, this lesson has connections in social studies and geography. Different phenomena such as natural events like earthquakes and winter storms, as well as volcanoes have supporting lessons. These are just a few examples of resources that we've created to support teachers in using GIS in their classrooms. You can access all of these lessons and activities specific to your provincial or territorial curriculum by visiting the home page of your ArcGIS Online subscription and choosing the appropriate group for the area that you teach. You can also access all of our resources by going to our lesson planner and searching for keywords and filtering your results. The Education and Research Group help with the administration of a number of school, district-wide, provincial, and territorial subscriptions. If you would like support to customize your ArcGIS Online homepage, please let me know. In addition to our resources, there are a number of interactive maps and story maps data that are available for you to use in your teaching. They are not created specifically for education, but are useful and engaging as an additional resource. Since ArcGIS Online has users from around the globe and from a number of organizations, such as the United Nations, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and the World Bank, just to name a few, there are numerous resources available. Of course, with ArcGIS Online, your students can also create their own interactive maps. Today, I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to create a web map by using the Introduction to ArcGIS Online tutorial. You can access this tutorial by going to the Introduction to GIS group on your homepage and selecting the resource. To get started, I need to sign into ArcGIS.com. I've already done that and I can verify that by seeing my name at the top right hand corner. To start creating a map, I simply choose the map tab. Sometimes depending on the screen you're in, your options are across the top 
or they might be hidden under a drop down arrow. I can search for a city or an address or a place. So I'm going to choose my school. And there it is. If it doesn't find your school, you might have to give it more information about where it is. I can zoom in by using the arrow and the minus. I can also use the scroll on my mouse. Or I can click the shift key and draw a box around the location I want to zoom into. By default, the base map you see here is a topographic base map. So you can see the contour lines as an example on here. I can change the base map at any time while I'm making my web map to another option. So in this case, I've chosen the imagery base map. I'm going to go back to the topographic one for the, this map. I want to add a point on my map to show where my school is. So I'm going to go over to add and I'm choosing the map notes option. Map notes allows you to add points, lines, polygons and text right onto your map. Now I'm going to grab the pin and place that right on top of my school. I can give this pop-up a title. I can write a description. And I can add a photo and a website here. Now the photos need to live somewhere online that could be in your own photo sharing account such as Flickr or it might be by doing a Google search for images. So I'm going to grab the image URL and I can verify it's an image URL by seeing it ending in a .jpg which is one of the for photo formats you can use. I'm going to clear this and paste it in. And now I also can add a link that will make that photo interactive to a website. So I just need to copy that and again paste that in. I can change my symbol if I don't want the default. There are shapes and there's lots of other options depending on what information you're putting on your map. I'm going to stick with shapes and accept that. Now if I want to see what my pop-up looks like, I just need to turn off the editing option and now I can go and select my point and see um, my title, the information, and the photograph I've added, which also when I click on that you can see it's interactive to a website and brings me to the website I linked to. There's other things I can do to my map. So in addition to adding map notes, which now that I've already added one map note, I can go back and turn the editor on to keep adding points, lines, or polygons to my map. I could add layers that other people have shared in ArcGIS Online. So I'm going to search for um, a keyword, or as known in ArcGIS Online, a tag, using Arc Canada. And that's a keyword that we use at Esri Canada for any data that's shared by the education group in ArcGIS Online. So as I mentioned, in ArcGIS Online, so I need to change this from just searching in my organization to all of ArcGIS Online, and I'm going to uncheck within map area. So now I can see everything that's been tagged with Arc Canada population. So I'm going to add this population density layer to my map. So now I can actually see and interact with that data that's on my map and see by dissemination area now I've got information what the population density is. And this is interactive so as I zoom to a smaller scale I can see it changes in this case census subdivision now. You can also use other tools such as the measure tool to measure areas, lines, or absolute location. In this case, I want to measure the track around our school. My gym teacher told me that the track is 250 meters, but I'm pretty sure that it's a bit longer than that. 
So I'm going to measure that to verify. And indeed, it is about a 400 meter track. Another neat way to use this measure tool is if you're teaching history, looking at the land that was promised to immigrants settling in the West. It was 160 acres. And so I know students will say, what on earth is an acre? Well, what a great tool to use to measure what 160 acres maybe looked like and have your students do some math to calculate what would that land cost today. Now I'm going to save my map so I can use it at uh, another time, maybe on my own computer at home or on a tablet. I have to give my map a title. I can change that at another time. I have to give it a tag, which is a keyword, and I can save that now into my account. The next time you log in to ArcGIS.com, when you log in, you'll want to go to My Content, and this is where you can find all of your web maps and story maps that you've created. I find an easy way to search if you have a lot of content is by creating folders for projects or different classes, and you can also search by the date something was created. Now creating your map, we used it just to um, add some places in your community. In this case, it was my school. But you could use that process to map really anything that has a location. So if you're using primary source documents, diary entries and letters, maybe for example of a soldier, you can map those locations or current events or newspaper articles. You can map land use in your community, maybe even what you ate for breakfast. If you haven't already signed up for ArcGIS Online, I encourage you to do so to get a subscription account. You can do that by visiting esri.ca slash access. This is also the same place you would go to request access for your students. Promote and encourage your colleagues to learn a bit about GIS and ArcGIS Online and use it in their teaching as well. And that's something we can help with. Sign up for part two, ArcGIS Online, a tool for inquiry in a few weeks. Are there any questions? So there was a question about access to ArcGIS Online. So I'll just so you don't have to actually remember that URL. I'm going to take you back to the home page. We try and make these home pages to be one place where you can go for resources that we've created or other ideas. Also, um, how to access ArcGIS online. So if you just remember when you sign into your account and you go to the home page, on this home page, there's lots of information including the URL to access ArcGIS Online, also our email address and our Twitter account, in addition to the resources that are housed in these various groups. Thank you so much to everyone for taking time during your lunch to join us and uh, I hope to hear from all of you. You will hear from me with a copy of this presentation in the recording so that you can uh, reference that or share with other colleagues. Thank you.